All right. Hey, good morning. It's uh, middle of the week, and man, uh, we're ready to rock and roll. So I uh, hope everything's good in your world. We watched some football last night, and um, good time. Just hanging out with kids and my family and um, just watching my grandson play. And just it was a great night doing that. It's a travel day, so uh, up there. So I went to Asheville. It was a good time. Uh, had had some really good stuff. To, tomorrow, I'm uh, going to go head out and hang out with my oldest son we're gonna head to um <laughs> we're gonna head to munich for a weekend and uh should be fun looking forward to that so uh lots going on but today i got work to focus on and uh right now at this moment i want to focus on uh the word of god so if you're ready i am too let's jump into some truth right we're in luke chapter eight and uh <clears throat> luke is just reminding us of the power of jesus and how he is the messiah He's proving this over and over. His whole deal, Luke, was to study all the facts, read all of the other Gospels by um, sound people who who had actually eyewitness accounts. And so he went through all of that, and he compiled this letter, this book, this uh, document that we have that records for us the life of Jesus. And it's very specific. And so it's good and it's rich. Uh, Matthew and Mark wrote wrote one as well, similar to this. Um, And then John writes one vastly different. So you have what we call the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Most of what they say is is the same. Each one adds a little nuance to the different things. Uh, Like this story that we're going to look in here today. I think Mark says that there were two men on this... uh, in this uh, beached area where they where they nestled, uh, Luke only records the one, <clears throat> but Mark really only refers to two, and then s- drills down and talks about this same one. And so, this is kind of how the scriptures work. It's important to see them as they unfold. So today we're talking about the issue of demonized and delivered. And um, interesting, as we go through this and we learn some things, as we uh, as we just kind of drill down and see, this isn't meant to be a uh, theology on uh, you know demons or demonization or anything like that, but it is what it is, and so here we are, and we're teaching through it, so we will look at some of those things. Now, uh, the, Jesus has authority over the supernatural realm, right? I mean, <clears throat> all the, the angelic host, all of creation, there's nothing that was made that wasn't made by him and for him and through him. And so he has power over all of that. And it's important to understand that. So we move now into, I think this may be the second encounter uh, of, of a demonic activity that's taking place. But Luke is just systematically recording kind of the events, drawing out not every event, but most of the events, and giving us a little synopsis of what took place. <clears throat> These little journal entries, if you will, sort of uh, from a, a reverse engineering thing. He wasn't actually with Jesus during these things, but he studied everyone who was. And so he's recreated kind of a journal of what took place as Jesus traveled on those days. Now, demonic activity is an interesting thing because uh, it's it's very rarely spoken about. In, in the Old Testament, it really is of, of no consequence. There's none to speak of, really. There, there's Genesis 6, uh, which refers to uh, the sons of uh, daughters, sons of, of God uh, cohabitating with the daughters of women, uh, of men. And so you get that perspective there of a, of a demonic, angelic, fallen angels doing their thing. You get it there. Uh, you also get it in 1 Samuel 22. Uh, where an evil spirit would infiltrate uh, Saul. And then you get it in uh, 1 Kings 22, where um, Jehoshaphat and Micaiah uh, are are having conversations, and an evil spirit kind of shows up in that realm. The only other one is the witch at Endor, um, where we assume those were demonic people who were impersonating people of the past when um, that, that took place. So that... That's about all there is in in the Old Testament. But you come to the Gospels, and activity is heightened. Why? Because the Messiah is here, and and so they they know uh, that they the the angels, the demonic realm, they, they they know what's going on. They understood the Messiah was coming. They 
the, these demons even understand the end times. They they have they have fairly orthodox theology. Uh, James says, "Hey, they believe, but they shudder." Right? There's no hope for them. They they're they're in rebellion against God, and they will be. So, all fallen angels will eventually end up in the lake of fire. Right? S uh, Satan will be cast into there. Uh, the beast will be cast into there. These fallen angels be, who aren't in a, an abyss in a pit already will be cast there, and then then all the unsaved themselves will be cast into that, that lake. So but then you get to the book of Acts, and there's two encounters. Uh, just, just two, chapter 16, chapter 19, there's two encounters. You get to the New Testament, there's no encounters. Uh, and so <clears throat> that's not meant to say that they're not active today. They're, they're active. It's just that it's a, after the crucifixion and the resurrection, they were rendered powerless in that sense. So, Jesus has power over the kingdom of darkness. And this is the point that, that uh, Luke is making here. 1 John 3, 8 says this, The one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. No, those who practice sin, they're of the devil. <clears throat> Listen, every lost person, we, we wouldn't necessarily call them um, you know, demonized, but but they are under the control of the evil one, right? Your their their father is the devil, right? That's that's what they were born. That's why uh, Jesus refers to the Pharisees as um, your your liars, just like your father, the devil, right? So you are either a child of God, or at this point, a child of Satan, right? That, that if you're not a believer in Christ, you're you're a child of Satan. Now, so that's the skinny on what's taking place. And so he co we come to verse 26 now, just to kind of set that stage up. We come to verse 26, and it says, Then they sailed, sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite of Galilee. So remember, they got in the boat after he had had about ten parables uh, that he had taught, had maybe a meal. They all gathered the boat, a little flotilla, heads off toward uh, the other side of the mountain. Uh, the other side of the sea. Uh, Jesus is planning on just resting there, and they will, no doubt, but there was also a divine appointment that took place. This storm uh, that came upon them, so th it, they've been through just a torrentious night. Uh, it's the morning, so all of his people, uh, so there would have been, when we think disciple, don't just think the 12. There were there were 70, it doesn't mean that there were 70 in this, but we know that there was a, a close following Luke recorded for us some of the women that participated and went with him and, and journeyed with him. And so it is a gathering of disciples that, that uh, disembark off these boats and, and begin to, to hit this shore. And so it says this, And when they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite of Galilee, and when he stepped out onto the land, a man from the city met him who was possessed with demons. And he had not put on clothing for a long time and was living in and was not living in a house, but among the tombs. So this is this is the situation, right? So they're in the region of the Gerasenes. This is Gentile region. These we know we know that from several things. One, there's a herd of pigs there. Jews would have been nowhere around that. It's an unclean animal. They just wouldn't have done that. Uh, so this is this is the Gentile region. Remember, they are they are in there. And the up north is Gentile territory. To the east is Gentile territory. To the west is Jewish territory. And so they're, they're no longer in the Jewish territorial areas. And so there's this term demonized, right? Uh, that he is possessed with a demon. Um, that, that They took a little liberty when they did that. Not that he's not possessed, but there's a couple of things. Mostly several times throughout the scriptures, maybe of the 19 or so that's mentioned here, a, a majority of those use the term demonized. That is that they are being influenced. Now, Sometimes that's external, right? So they're being influenced. Jesus looks at Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. That's not saying that, that, that Peter was possessed. It means that Peter was influenced by the whispers of Satan, fallen angels, demons, right? And so he, that, that's why that says that. Ananias and Sapphira, why has Satan filled your heart to lie? Right, same thing. They were influenced 
to, to do that. Then there were others that, that were internal, right? We, we know Mary Magdalene, God delivered her from what? Seven demons. What does that mean? Well, delivered from, that means that they were within, he cast them out. We see it here, right? He's possessed. Jesus is going to speak to a spirit inside, not a spirit, but a legion of spirit, and to the lead one inside this man. So, to be clear, the demonic activity is not always derived from within the individual, although it is. Never from a believer, but always, and never always from an unbeliever. They just heavily influence. Hey, if, if, there's, a, if there's a foothold that they can get in there, they will. Uh, but, but the thing is, it, 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 it is their effect on us, right? That, that's what they, they do, right? Our flesh is deceived by them, right? Put off the old man, which is being corrupted by his deceitful desires. And so they, they do that. Satan, Satan uh, uh, tries to um, cover us, right? To deceive us. Now, all unsaved people are citizens of the kingdom of darkness, right? What did he transfer out of from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, right? This is this is true. We just need to understand that. Every unsaved person that you know is a, a part of the realm of darkness. It's, it's no wonder then why why uh, government and, and entities like that have this because they are under that control. We know that because we know that when... When uh, the angel came to see Daniel in Daniel chapter nine, there were there were demonic realms and forces at work there. There were those who had charge over territories. There was the the prince of Persia, right? Uh, a, de a demon whose job is to wreak havoc there. We assume from that there's an organization such that that it could be that every every area has um, has a demonic uh, entity over it, right? And so so this is what's going on. So they are children of Satan, just like the Pharisees were. So they're influenced. They 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 they're not children of God yet. They're they're his creation, but they're not his children. They have no covering, they have no protection. They're orphans. This is this is what the world is. They 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 they're they don't they're not covered by the blood of Christ. They're not covered by but filled with the Spirit of Christ, right? This is not that. So what are the entry points to these? We're going to get to the story. I just think it's important while we're doing this to have these conversations. Occult activity is a fast and sure way to invite that demonic realm into the life of an unbeliever and to a believer to heavily influence them, to deceive them, to, to lead them astray. That's what Paul told 1 Corinthians. I, I fear lest as Satan deceived Eve, he would lead you away from a pure and simple devotion to Christ, right? This is what he's afraid of. Listen, Drugs is that kind of thing. That aspect where, where those those that thing opens yourselves up to, to different dimensions, so to speak, and you begin to, to pursue after that. That's why it's like, man, just don't mess with those things. And I wouldn't watch occult movies. That's one of the hard rules we have in our house. I'm not watching you that. You guys think you're brave enough to do it. Do it at your own peril. I'm just saying we don't. And now we have nothing to fear, but I'm not stupid, right? I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna invite the enemy just to wreak havoc in my life. Uh, attachments, idolatry, that will always attract that, right? The, the, we see that in the Old Testament, the sense of those, those, uh, the, the idols and, and all that that does. Walking after the flesh will do that, right? Uh, hey, uh, let, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Why? For you may give Satan a foothold. What's he talking about? I mean, he may climb on your back and find a way to influence you, whisper in your ear, all of those things. Sexual immorality. It thrives around that that environment, and so these are the things that that take place. I've had personal experience with these things in India uh, at our at the first church we we established. Uh, then I had a friend of mine who was a, a, a former warlock came and spoke, was delivered from that. So I mean, I have several experiences in that. I'm not interested in talking about that. I just want you to understand. Let's look at this thing now. It says, then they sailed to the country of Gerizim, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out onto the land, a man from the city who was possessed with demons, who had not put on any clothing, naked, right? That, that's that is that's a sexual attachment to a sexual perversion kind of thing. And he's cutting, he's gnashing himself, right? So just as though uh, they were naked, not ashamed, naked, knew they were ashamed, normal people put covering over themselves. But those who are all in with the satanic, man, they're they're just they're wide open. And so this is him. Uh He's gnashing himself, right? That, that's that whole murdering thing, right? Just wounding the flesh. 
And so you see that these are attributes of Satan himself, right? The, the sexual perversion, the corrupt race, uh, the, to murder, right? And then to rebel, uncontrollable. Nothing could control him. They tie him up. Today, a lot of the people who are medicated could possibly be heavily influenced by the demonic realm, either internally or, or externally. Or we imprison them, like Charles Manson, right? We just imprisoned him. Now, Jesus encounters him, and he begs him not to torment him. Listen to what it says. And seeing Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And he said in a loud voice, What business do you have of me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Listen, he didn't. Jesus didn't have a name tag on. They weren't in some conference, and he's looking at the name tag. How, how did he know that? How did he know he's Jesus? Because he's he's known him since the since he was created, right? And so they have knowledge. They know who he is, son of the most high God. The demons believe in God, most high. They don't worship him, but they believe in him. And he says, I beg you. Do not torment me. Now, so he's begging him, hey, don't, don't, don't send me to hell. Uh, don't, don't put me in, in the abyss. It's, it's too early. Isn't it too early? I mean, I think we got more time still. This is this is them negotiating with the King of Kings. Hebrews 2:14 says, Through his death, he rendered powerless the one who had power over death. That is the devil. So they're active right now, knowing there's going to come a time when Jesus. Uh, man, he, when he dies and is, is, is resurrected, their power's gone. And then they know, man, when he returns, uh, they're going to the abyss. And so they're making hay while the sun shines, so to speak. Uh, now, we get to verse 29, and it says this, For he had already commanded the unclean spirit to come out of him. He's already said, hey, get out of here, right? For he had already commanded him that. For it had seized him many times, and he was bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard, and yet he would break the restraints and be driven by the demon into the desert. This is what it is. Just drive them away, bind them, do whatever. And then when when uh, when he's when he gets free of the restraints of, of, of mankind to control him, they, they, they he he runs to the desert. And Jesus asks him, What is your name? Right? So uh, he says, My name is Legion. Now, Legion means six thousand soldiers. That's that's whether that was a a metaphor or a precise deal, uh, he says, He says, what's your name? Well, we, my name is Legion, our, our name is Legion, for we are many. So this man's got potentially 6,000 demons inside of him, right? Uh, and this is, this is what it says. What's your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they were begging him not to command them to go away into the abyss. Listen, they know that there's an abyss. There's a there's a holding place that they're going to be put in, and then they'll be put into the lake of fire. And he knows that's coming. Uh, in fact, he knows that some angels have already been bound there. Genesis 6 says there's some there. And so, so this is what's going on. Now, it says in verse 32, Now there was a herd of many pigs feeding there on the mountain, and the demons begged him, to permit them to enter the pigs. And he gave them permission. Now, this is a strange deal. He gave them permission. They couldn't do anything that he didn't want to do. It was said of old that they that, that demons crave bodies uh, because they were perished in the flood, so to speak. Uh, these half men, half angelic. If you, if you see scripture like that in the Old Testament, then you believe that the demonic realm then potentially was created when, when the angels came and cohabitated with the daughters of men and created this, these half humans. It's it's a theology I don't want to talk about right now, but, but so they say then when the flood happened, uh, the, these souls didn't go anywhere because they weren't really souls. They were just demonic things, and so now they float around and wreak havoc. That's a theology you can discover and see for yourself. But whatever it is, they're like, hey, man, just don't send us to the abyss. Send, hey, how about pigs? I know you guys hate pigs. How about we go there, right? And I mean, they're look, they can't cause any harm. Can we go there? Jesus gives them permission. And the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned, right? They're always after destruction. The ultimate goal of the demonic realm, destruction. That's what they're after. Now, uh, we get to verse 34, and we'll fly through this. It says, Now when the herdsmen saw what had happened, they ran away and reported everything in the city and the country. So the guys who are in charge of the pigs go, man, I don't know what happened. This guy's yelling at, at this guy. Jesus commands th these th this thing to come out of them. They jump into pigs, and, and my, all my pigs are gone. 
Verse 35, And the people came out to see what happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demon had gone out. So he's this guy's now not naked. He's sitting clothed. Uh, and, and, and it says, um, And he's sitting down at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind. So they, they know this they know this guy. And all of a sudden they see him there and they're freaked out. And they're like, he's sitting next to Jesus and he's calm. Now they're concerned about Jesus. So those who had seen everything reported to them how the man had been demon-possessed, had been made well. And all the people of the territory of the Gerizines, the surrounding region, asked him to leave them. They're like, Jesus, we need you to leave. Whatever's going on, they are freaked out, right? They're, they, man, they're, they're fearful of Jesus. There's no gratefulness. Hey, thanks for destroying that guy. Or, or helping him out. There, there's just fear. There's no repentance. Hey, man, we fall down and worship you. It's like, hey, you, we just need you gone, right? This is Gentile territory, man. They they don't. There's no love for Jesus there. Not even the power of God sways them into something else. Why why do, why do people not come to Jesus? I mean, I, it's got to be fear of control. Look at what it says. And all the people of the territory and gathering uh, at verse thirty-eight. But the man from whom the demons had gone out, begging him that he might have come. Hey, like, hey, I want to go hang out with you. And Jesus goes, uh-uh, no. Nah. You return to your home and you testify about the great things done for you. So he went away proclaiming throughout the city the great things that Jesus had done. Man, what a, what a powerful story of just God's grace and deliverance. And so, man, I kept you a little longer. Lord, Lord bless you. I'll, Lord willing, see you in the morning.